Adventures of the Magic Kingdom was released on the NES by Capcom in 1990, while the rest of the various Capcom NES games were based on an established franchise, or at the very least starred a major Disney character for you to play as, this game is based on attractions in the Disney theme parks, and you play as a generic character, although there are iconic Disney characters in the cutscenes, and you at least get to name your character, which populates in the dialogue. The story is simple, but it raises some questions. So Mickey's in charge of the parade at the park, but the gate to the park is locked, and the man in charge of the keys, Goofy, not only left the key in Cinderella's castle, but that castle is also locked, which requires six keys to unlock. So yeah, leaving aside the questionable decisions on the security system of this place, not to mention the incompetent choice of making Goofy the key master, time is of the essence and we can totally split up and cover more ground, but instead let's put the entire workload on this random kid who doesn't even work for Disney. Yeah, Goofy's a dumbass, but Mickey is a shit leader. But it is what it is, and you've got to find the six keys, five of which are hidden in various attractions in the park, some of which are being guarded by folks who work here. So why are they not just giving up the keys? The one key that isn't in one of these five attractions is being guarded by a group of kids that send you on a scavenger hunt and only allowing you access to the next in line once you answer a Disney trivia question in order to prove your association with Mickey. So once again, this brings into question why you're involved in this. Shouldn't Mickey himself just get the key from these punks straight away? Anyway, the five stages can be completed in any order via the map screen, including the trivia scavenger hunt, and there are no advantages to doing any particular stage before any of the others. You don't get any special items or weapons or anything in particular stages. You do, however, collect stars, which are effectively currency, because you can spend it on power-ups at any moment in the pause menu, like a health increase, invincibility, one-up, or freezing all enemies on the screen. You get three hit points and three lives. The nature of each of these five stages varies. You've got a car racing level at Autopia, a minecart ride at Thunder Mountain, a shooter at Space Mountain, and two side-scrolling platformers in the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean, respectively. So the game has some variety, but the results are mixed at best. Autopia's got some jump ramps, cones to avoid, and of course the other drivers, but it takes too long to get into second gear, and there are often tight spaces, and one sideswipe of the wall causes you to wipe out and then start the sluggish process again. But it is a serviceable racer once you get rolling. The shooter is completely dependent upon your reflexes, a prompt will pop up and you'll have to press the corresponding button within a very short time window to either move in a direction or fire. It's a challenge, but it's not as exciting as it looks, since you're only firing when you're asked to, and more often than not, you're not shooting anything, you're just redirecting the ship. Then there's Thunder Mountain's minecart ride, where you somewhat control the cart by redirecting it at the crossroads, or slowing it down to avoid boulders. The goal is to reach one of four different numbered stations at the end within the time limit. The two side-scroller stages are definitely the best ones. The controls are responsive, you get to shoot shit up in the form of candles, although you get a limited amount of ammo that you can at least replenish, and although it's nothing special, it just overall feels a lot more well-rounded than any of the other modes in this game. The real shame here is the fact that there are only two of these stages in the whole game. These other stages are essentially mini-games, and should have been bonus levels or some shit, while the platformer should have been the main game. The whole game is short enough anyway, beefing it up with three more side-scrolling stages and letting these other modes act as additional areas could have been a good idea, especially since there's no final stage after finding the six keys. You just unlock the castle, and you're finished. The game has a lot of variety, but there's a lack of substance across the board. It's no Action 52 in this sense, absolutely not, but it definitely feels unfinished and unpolished. More could have definitely been done, both in quantity and quality. So the game starts out with a cutscene of Mickey and the gang realizing that they need to get the six keys in order to get the parade going, and they enlist in you to help them out. You'll then be able to walk around the park and decide where you want to go. 
Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion are on the west side. Thunder Mountain is up north. Autopia is on the east. Space Mountain to the southeast. And the Enchanted Castle is dead center. There are also a couple spots you won't actually access, like It's a Small World up north and Tom Sawyer's Island in the northeast. Maybe those were scrapped levels or something. Like I said before, it doesn't matter what order you decide, so do them in any order you wish. At some point, you'll need to get a key from these punk kids that ask you Disney trivia questions in order to prove that you're friends with Mickey, like I had mentioned earlier. You'll start at one kid over by the castle. If you answer his question, he'll send you to the girl by Space Mountain, who sends you to this kid back at the castle, who sends you to a kid at Small World, who sends you to a kid at the front gate, who sends you to a dog that has the key over at Tom Sawyer's Island, where you'll find a girl with the dog. It'll run away once you answer correctly, and you'll find it with a kid over at Autopia, who will ask you two questions before finally giving you the key. The questions are random, and there are over 50 of them in the bank, so I'm not going to go over every possible question, but almost all of these can be figured out with a simple Google search if you don't know. Anytime you guess incorrectly, just go back and ask again and it'll bring up a new question. You won't lose any lives or anything. Autopia is the racing stage where you have to finish in first place out of 8 cars total to get the key from Pete, who stole it. There'll be a fork in the road early, whichever side you take, just be ready for the tight spaces, which will occur throughout a lot of the race. Watch out for the cones, and when you get to this ramp, you'll take flight. Position yourself onto the ramps to the right, then left, then either side before landing back onto the main course. If you fall into the pit, you'll lose the race automatically, and it's a life lost. You'll get a couple more ramps, and then another fork where either way you'll end up on a dock with a drawbridge that opens and closes. Slow down here cause you'll need to time it so you get on the bridge when it's down. At the home stretch, it's a trio of water spouts. Weave your way around the center of each of them. Hugging the wall is a good way to do it. And you'll reach the finish line right after. Space Mountain might be the hardest one to complete just because you have to respond very quickly to button prompts, especially toward the end. The story is that Mickey is navigating and you're piloting, with the button prompts acting as Mickey's commands. The letter at the top of the screen indicates how close you are. You're trying to get to the F star, and it goes alphabetically starting at A, so you've got five areas to clear. The prompts will pop up as any of the four directions of up, down, left, or right, as well as both, left and right. You can press either one. Also, you have to shoot down meteors with either the A or B button. It won't straight up tell you to use A or B, it'll be the solid block that shows up on the left or right side of the panel. B is on the left, and A is on the right, like the controller. You get a very short window to press the correct button. If you don't hit that window, or press the wrong button entirely, you'll lose a hit point, and after losing all three, you lose a life. The button pattern is almost the same every time, but I've seen multiple variations in certain spots here and there and I can't find any indication on how many different combinations there really are, so all I can say is watch the screen and react quickly. There's over 50 different commands you have to enter in total, and once you get through them all, you get the key. In Thunder Mountain, you control a minecart going down the track with all kinds of twists and turns in hopes of avoiding the boulders, dead ends, and barriers. The barriers and rolling boulders will take away hit points, You'll need to use the brakes to slow down in order to let the boulders pass, or see ahead of you to make the right call on which turn to take to avoid the barrier or the dead end, which kills you upon impact. But you can't abuse the brakes because you have a time limit. You also won't always have the same goal. There are four different stations at the end, and which one you have to enter is random. At the beginning, take a left, and I mean left side of the screen, not left from the perspective of your character. Use the brakes to avoid the boulders that fall here, then bang a right, a left at this fork, stay to the right along these turns, then a left. Stay right to head straight down here, veer left and an immediate right down this way. Bang a right at the fork, stay left, and then veer right to stay straight, veer right to head this way and left. Bang a right at the fork, stay right to head down this long straightaway, and then a right at the fork, stay left, and then right, and this is the point where it depends on which station is your goal. 
your goal is stations one or two, stay to the right for these three turns, then bang a left, stay the course, and at the fork at the end, take a left for station one or a right at station two. If your goal is station three or four, stay to the right continuously until you get to this fork. If your goal is station three, stay to the left, and then bang a right and a quick left down this straightaway to the station. If your goal is station four, and just keep hugging the right at the fork and you'll hit the station. Okay, saving the best for last, the two platformers. First, the Haunted Mansion. You can fire candles at enemies and you get 10 to start. Use them to wipe out these ghouls that wander around and eventually fire a projectile when they're in front of you. You can jump over them too if you want to save candles, but you shouldn't have to worry about that unless you miss a lot. Take the top path, there are less enemies to deal with, and watch for the zombies that pop their heads out from behind the tombstones. They don't really do anything aside from try to surprise you. Enter the door to get inside the mansion, grab the candle, and ride up this floating chandelier to get the stars before advancing. Watch out for these hands that pop out of the casket. Wait for the opening before moving on. There's another floating chandelier up here for a star and candle replenishment, but it is a tough angle to execute so keep in mind the time limit. You'll get to this floating platform, grab the star nearby, and then hop onto it to take you up a floor, head left, and you'll encounter the dancing ghosts who shift vertical direction as they float over to you. So don't try to sneak under them, keep your distance and fire. You'll get to a long pit where you'll have to traverse across these moving platforms. Keep your eye on them when you jump from one to the other or to get a candle replenishment in case they suddenly change direction and fuck up your timing. Make sure you have the pattern down before you rush in. Jump onto this floating chair which takes you up another floor and then books will start floating at you from the shelves. Fire at them, it's a lot easier to wipe them out than to jump over them and try to land back on the chairs because it'll suddenly shift vertically before going back to its normal trajectory similar to earlier with the moving platforms. Just remember to fire a double shot here cause you'll get attacked quickly. And one hit from one of these things will knock you into the pit. Soon after you'll hit up another floating platform that'll take you up to the boss. This ghost that floats in your direction. There are a shit ton of candle replenishments in this room so even if you come in here empty handed, you'll be able to take them out. Give yourself some distance, fire away, and jump over him when he's at the low end of his pattern. Sometimes he goes up higher and you can actually walk under him. Either way, get as far away from him as you can before unloading on him. Fill up on candles when needed, and eventually you'll take him out and get the key. Last stage on the list is Pirates of the Caribbean, where your goal is to rescue six villagers who have been kidnapped by pirates and light a signal flare to confirm their safety. After landing your boat on the island, You've got these pirates that try to take you out. You can't use your candles here yet, so you'll have to jump over these guys, at least until you get to the houses where you can roll these barrels into them. Climb up into the rooms here for some stars, and watch out for these pirates with the cannonballs or whatever it is that they're throwing at you. Duck or jump over them, and watch out for these guys in the window tossing barrels out to give you a taste of your own medicine. Climb up here to rescue your first villager and hop into the boat to go to the next section. Just watch out for the cannonballs that are presumably being fired from a nearby ship by pirates. The splash of the water can hurt you too, so stop yourself short. Wait for these fireballs to fall after they pop out of the fire pits, and right here you'll want to lure out the third one and fall back before jumping out so you don't get hit, and you'll rescue another villager. Grab the star ahead before dropping your way down this ladder. Jump over the scorpions and watch for the skeleton pirates in the background that pop out and throw some projectiles in the air that cascades down in a group of six. Get in between the shitstorm, grab the third villager, and bypass this first ladder. You can go up here, but go forward instead. You'll have another pirate throwing shit at you, plus this guy tries to get in your way while avoiding it all. And you'll find a candle at the next ladder up which will take you right up to where you would have went anyway. With this candle, you can fire your weapon again. And these cannons that the pirates fire at you, you can turn the tables and light them up too. Climb up here, sneak up on this pirate and take him out, and rescue the villager here, as well as the one right after that. 
climb up the next ladder, and the final villager is to the immediate right. If you want, you can explore the nearby area for some more stars, otherwise drop back down and light a fire at the end here as your signal flare, and take the boat out, and the old man from the village gives you the silver key as a sign of gratitude. So now you've got all six keys, bring it to the castle, you'll unlock the gate, Mickey gets the parade going, and that's the end of the game. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.